Unit 2, Lesson 15, Part-Part Whole Ratios. Number 1. Here is a tape diagram representing the ratio of red paint to yellow paint in a mixture of orange paint. A. What is the ratio of yellow paint to red paint? It looks like a ratio of 2 yellow, 3 red. B. How many total cups of orange paint will this mixture yield? These are cups. This represents three cups. And these are cups, and this represents three cups. So yellow, there's a total of six cups, plus red, nine cups. This is going to yield 15 cups of orange paint. 15 cups of orange paint will be yielded with this mixture. Number two, at the kennel, the ratio of cats to dogs is four to five. There are 27 animals in all. Here is a tape diagram representing this ratio. One, two, three, four. That's four cats. One, two, three, four, five. That represents five dogs. But the total needs to be 27. Let's try three. Three, six, nine, 12. Pretend that there's 12 cats. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. And let's pretend that there's 15 dogs. Let's add this up. 2 plus 5 is 7. 1 plus 1 is 2. 27. What is the value of each small rectangle? The value for each small rectangle is 3. How many dogs are at the kennel? This represents the number of dogs at the kennel. So there's 15 dogs. How many cats are at the kennel? This represents the number of cats. There are 12 cats, 15 dogs, 12 cats. Last month, there were four sunny days for every rainy day. If there were 30 days in a month, how many days were rainy? Explain your reasoning. If you get stuck, consider using a tape diagram. One, two, three, four. These are all sunny. And then finally, you have a day that's rainy. This is a total of one, two, three, four, and five. So in these five days, one of them is rainy, four of them are sunny. So the question is, there's 30 days. Well, that means that we're gonna have six things exactly like this, because six times five is 30. Six times four sunny days plus Six times one rainy day. Six times four is 24 sunny days. Plus six times one is six rainy days. So every 30 days, there would be 24 sunny days and six rainy days. Number four, Noah entered a 100 mile bike race. He knows he can ride 32 miles in 160 minutes. 32 miles in 160 minutes. So these are minutes, these are miles. At this rate, how long will it take him to finish the race? So he's gotta go 100 miles. I'm gonna take a different approach at this because I know that I can take 32 and eventually turn that into a four. I'm going to cut the 32 into half, that gives me 16, and then I cut it in half again, that gives me 8, and then I cut it in half again, that's going to give me 4. Now I'd need to do that to the 160. I'm going to cut the 160 in half, and that's going to give me 80. I need to cut that in half again, and that's going to give me 40. 40 divided by 2, that's going to give me 20. Well, the reason why I broke it down all the way down to a 4 is because I know that I can turn the 4 into 100. That's what they're asking for right here. A 100-mile bike race. So I took the 32 miles and I turned it into 4 miles because I know that I could multiply 4 times 25 to get 100 miles. Now all i got to do is multiply the 20 times 25 
10 times 25 would be 250. So 20 times 25 would be twice as big as 250. That would be 500. So my answer is right down here. 100 miles minutes. Noah entered 100 mile, a 100 mile bike race. He can travel at 32 miles in 60 minutes, which is the same thing as traveling four miles in 20 minutes. And four miles in 20 minutes is the same thing as traveling 100 miles in 500 minutes. So we can travel 100 miles in 500 minutes. Next, explain which table you think works better in finding the answer. 32 divided by 8 equals 4, so 160 divided by 8 equals 20. So I like this. I like this chart right here. I don't necessarily need the 96. I would turn the 4 into 100 by multiplying the 4 times 25. 4 times 25 equals 100. And if I did it to this side, I need to do it to this side as well. So 20 times 25 gave me 500. Number five, a cashier worked an eight hour day and earned $58. The double number line shows the amount she earned for working different numbers of hours. For each question, explain your reasoning. So this represents the wages earned in dollars and this represents the time worked in hours. A. How much does the cashier earn per hour? Well, we need to figure out how much $1 an hour would be. $1 an hour is exactly half of $2 an hour. We need to figure out the amount that the cashier earns in one hour. And that's going to be exactly half of the amount that the cashier earns in two hours. So we need to cut this number in half. Half of $14 is seven and half of five dimes or 50 cents is 25 cents. So the cashier earns in one hour, they earn $7.25. B, how much does the cashier earn if she works three hours? Well, there's many ways that we can do this. If we subtract one hour from four, we would get three hours, which would mean that we'd have to subtract $7.25 from $29. That's one way to do it. Or to get a three, we could add one to two. So if we added one to two, we would get three. So this two plus another one would get us to three. In other words, we could take this $14.50 plus 725 to get the amount that would be hiding right in here, in this area right here, that represents how much she would earn after working three hours. What is 14 plus seven? That's 21. What is 50 cents plus 25 cents? That's 75 cents. So for three hours, she's earning $21.75. A grocery store sells bags of oranges in two different sizes. Three pound bags cost four dollars eight pound bags cost nine dollars so let's say three to four compared to eight to nine 
Which oranges cost less per pound? Explain or show your reasoning. So we're comparing three fourths to eight ninths. We can show what it looks like this way. This represents one fourth, two fourths, and three fourths. One fourth, two fourths, three fourths. And we can compare that with one ninth, two ninths, three ninths, four ninths, five ninths, six ninths, seven ninths, eight ninths, and nine ninths. This represents one ninth, two ninth, three ninth, four ninth, five ninths, six ninths, seven ninths, and eight ninths. One ninth, two ninths, three ninths, four ninths, five ninths, six ninths, seven ninths, eight ninths. 8 ninths leaves a smaller amount left over than 3 fourths. Therefore, 8 ninths is larger. 8 ninths is larger. Another way to do it is to do 3 divided by 4, and that comes out to 0.75. Or 75 hundredths compared to 8 divided by 9. How many times does 9 go into 8? 0. Put your decimal. How many times does 9 go into 80? 8. It's going to go in 8 times. 8 times 9 is 72. 8 left over. Again, how many times does 9 go into 80? And this is just going to continue, isn't it? So we can put a line over it. So 88 hundredths repeated. 75 hundredths compared to 88 hundredths. And this is repeating itself. So we could look at these as if they were pennies. What's greater, 75 pennies or 88 pennies? 88 pennies would be greater or 88 hundredths is greater than 75 hundredths. So eight pound bags for $9 is a better deal. You get more oranges for your money at eight pound bags of oranges for, for $9. Congratulations! You have completed Unit 2 Lesson 15, Part-Part-Whole Ratios. 